I'm Keith Warren. I'm a hunter, a fisherman. I'm throwing a big old bait because I'm looking for a big old fish. A conservationist. Oh, come on. A family man. And I'm proud to be a deer farmer. I'm taking a road trip and we're going behind the scenes of today's most innovative deer farmers and wildlife management operations in North America. This is Deer and Wildlife Stories. On today's Deer and Wildlife Stories, we travel to America's heartland, where it's midsummer and the cornfields are standing tall, an area where farmers have lived off the land for generation after generation, an area that truly is America. Old homes, good people, and good family cooking. And also home to some giant white-tailed deer. Today is the first time Deer and Wildlife Stories has ever come to Illinois. We are in the heartland here, folks. We're outside of Wapella, Illinois, and I think we're at the right house. We're looking for Rusty Carr with Dominant Genetics. Rumor has it that that man has got some really big deer. Howdy. You Rusty Carr? Depends. Are you a game warden? Uh, it depends. Are you Rusty Carr? Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm Keith Warren. <laughs> nice to meet you. I smell something going on. What's going on? A little breakfast. You feeling hungry? Let's do it. I always show up at the right time. Here, knock it out. Show me how it's done. This is Dale. This is Rusty's dad right here. Yeah, my name is Dale Carr. I'm Rusty's dad. I pretty much feed and take care of the deer. Rusty does all the genetics and the sales, and I do all the grunt work out here. On Rusty's deer farm, he has about, oh, about 120 deer. Half of them are bucks. And the bucks that he grows, his goal is to grow the biggest, framey, typical bucks that he can. Well, how'd y'all get started deer farming? My dad and I are passionate deer hunters. Seen the great market of whitetails, and that's when I first started purchasing deer in the, after my accident, February 19th of 2000. On that date, Rusty Carr was a 23-year-old construction worker that was driving a three-ton truck in an ice storm. While merging in heavy traffic, he lost control of his rig and the collision, it was horrific. After the wreck, the vehicle steering wheel was forced to the back of the seat. The motor was driven through the bottom of the cab and Rusty laid unconscious on the hood with both legs crushed by the dashboard. Despite a 15% chance of survival, Rusty miraculously fought through. And when he emerged from the hospital six months after his accident, Rusty was determined to live life to its fullest by pursuing his true passion, the white-tailed deer. Golly, Rusty. Now, what are all these from? They're all our sheds. Uh, my father's a big shed collector, and uh, we. Uh, this is all just the sheds off of most of our two-year-olds, because our two-year-olds and yearlings. This is that's a two-year-old. It's a great time length. Um, Very modest, great time length, look at that. But this is what you're trying to grow, isn't it? Yep, that characteristic, good characteristics. And oh, uh, cow, look at that. This is what hard work and deer genetics get you is. I mean, you know, if you're looking for typical deer, he's gonna sell you typical deer. This is unbelievable. I mean, look at the mass on some of these deer. Look at that. Okay, and, and again, you're not really going for the biggest score. You're going no, for the I'm, best look. I'm bringing for the best look, the framiest look, and that's what we're starting to get into now with my genetics. That's what I've been working really hard at doing, is just pushing that frame on our does. Oh my gosh, okay, and you got deer, obviously, out here that you, you can sell bread does, fawns, or even bucks, right? Anything. Oh my gosh, and look at this big bad sucker. 
this place, this deer farm, Rusty Carr's deer farm is loaded with giant genetics. And I'll tell you what, this deer right here, I don't know what he scores, but I'm gonna figure out what he scores. And viewers at home, if you log on to my Facebook page and the person who guesses closest to the score of this deer right here, we will send you, well, Rusty, will you send him a t-shirt? Send him a good t-shirt with his bowl signed to this, sign a t-shirt and we'll send it right back to you. Look at this, what a deer. Okay, so again, log on to my Facebook page and let me know what you think this sucker scores right here at Dominant Genetics. If you like the way our show looks on your television set, you're gonna absolutely love it when you see it in full HD online. And you can watch it on my website 24 seven free of charge at keithwarren.net. Take a look and you'll see what I'm talking about. This program is dedicated to the men and women of the United States Armed Forces, past, present, and future. Welcome back to Deer and Wildlife Stories where we're in Illinois with Rusty Carr from Dominant Genetics. Look at this, a little birdhouse up here on the fence of Rusty. This is something unusual. I mean, we got a hot wire around the fence, but look at this, that's a 10 foot fence. And most deer farms I go to do not have a 10 foot fence. So why do you have that on there? We got bigger wild deer. <laughs> <laughs> Y'all got big ones up here. This is the genetic charges where we work the most on uh, lining up genetics. The super size we bring in, we look at the grandmothers, grandfathers, great grandmothers, and then we bring the super sires that will cross best with them does onto that genetic chart to, to get the big framey deer, to get the huge brow tines. The genetics and the deer are looking tremendous. So any customer that comes here can walk right in here and see the board and see what the deer are out of. So you can get a potential uh, kind of idea of what you can expect but you can also go to Rusty's website at dominantgenetics.com and find out more. Okay, enough talking, show me some deer. All right, let's go see some deer. Rusty's mother, Carla, also helps around the farm with the bottle feeding, and this little guy's name is Noah. Hey Keith, open this door right here. We'll look at these monstrous fawns. Oh, look at the size of them. Golly, Rusty, they're He's big. Let's, these look good. Let's go out in the daylight and see the ones out in the, in the yard. Okay. Wow. Oh, look. Look at the size of them, Rusty. This is where we sit down, relax, and pet the fawns and give them treats. They're just big doe fawns, and they're doe fawns, right? And these are all doe fawns. We bottle fed. So we, we bottle feed them, we give them treats, we give them clover leaves. They're very, they're very spoiled of the best. So if somebody wants to buy a doe fawn from you, it's going to be bottle fed, right? Yeah, it's we, bottle, be we bottle feed everything, so everything's calm. They look amazing. They're gentle, like this little one right here coming up. <laughs> I mean, it's the work of these fawns is just amazing. So all they need to do is give you a call? Yeah, just give me a call. Well, let's go see the big boys, yeah, okay? Let's, let's go see, let's see, go see the, the big ones. <laughs> You've got one that could be the biggest one-year-old I've ever seen. Here on our left here is my one-year-olds. Really? Those are one-year-olds? That is as impressive of a field of one-year-olds as I've seen anywhere. Dominant genetics, buddy. Take a lot of pride in our genetics. Wow. That's, I mean, they're beautiful, big, framey deer. And that's what the industry's going for now. Big, framey deer. This group of yearlings is gonna put you on the map. I'm telling you folks, if you are in the Illinois area, if you want to see some impressive yearling bucks, you need to get a hold of Rusty Carr. Uh, give him your phone number. 309-275-9567. Uh, you got a website? Uh, dominantgenetics.com. So tell me about that. That is the most impressive yearling I've ever seen. He's a seven by six. How long he even times are 10, 12 inches, G2s? His G2s probably 12 and threes or 11. I mean, you know, and that one's got a split on it. That's a nice deer, buddy. If somebody would like to buy semen out of that deer, they could contact you as Just well. Just contact me as well. Do you plan on exposing your does? Yeah, I'm going to uh, AI them, and then I'll actually put the buck in there as well to make positively and not breeding too hard. But At the same time, I'm gonna try and limit his semen. Kind of so many straws every year and trying to make it more of a process like that. That's an awesome deer right there. And what you need to do is you need to come out and take a look at inside the barn because he's got the pedigree all laid out and I mean up on the wall and it's like a you're you're gonna get a lesson when you come here, I'll put it that way, a lesson in genetics because 
Rusty has it going on. Here's a question for you. Is too much of a good thing a bad thing? Well, it all depends on what too much of a good thing would be. And I'm talking about white-tailed deer. A hundred years ago, the white-tailed population across America was nothing like it is today. But because of us, we're doing a really good job of managing our wildlife and our wildlife habitat, and the numbers of white-tailed deer have exploded. They've exploded so much that now there's a lot of rural areas that have white-tailed deer that never before have had them, and those white-tailed deer are causing problems. Keep in mind that these areas where the deer are now causing problems, those people don't hunt. They don't know anything about the deer except they're causing problems and so in my opinion it gives deer well a bad image and i don't think that's good for sportsmen i think sportsmen need to realize that the white-tailed deer is the number one big game animal in north america and if we let people get that image that the white-tailed deer is nothing but a nuisance or just a pest kind of like a coon or a, a coyote well the value of the white-tailed deer will plummet i don't want to see that and i don't think you want to either so as sportsmen, I think that we can step up, all of us can step up and help educate some of these people that don't understand the importance and the value of white-tailed deer. If a community around you is overcrowded with white-tailed deer, go talk to them. See if you can help them out because it's our responsibility to make sure that the white-tailed deer has the greatest value it can so it's around 100 years from now. For more information on the American Deer and Wildlife Alliance, please join us online at DeerWildlifeAlliance.org. Speaking of the truth, tell them what happened to your leg. You were telling the truth now, you know. I twisted it a couple weeks ago. Okay, all right. All right. I should be sprained. Okay, sprained. <laughs> okay, that's a bad sprain. That's right a there. bad sprain. <laughs> Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by Deer Guardian Misting Systems, DNA Solutions, and the North American Deer Registry, Four Canyons Ranch, Hoff Power Polaris, the Hunter Heritage Foundation, Record Rack Deer Feeds, and by Southwest Fabricators, where quality goes in before the name goes on. Welcome back to Deer and Wildlife Stories and to the Midwest, where we are in Illinois visiting with Rusty Carr of dominant genetics. So how do these waters work? Um, automatic waters, there's a weight system on them. We clean them out every day. The cleaner the water, the more water they drink. Well, how do you keep them from freezing in the winter? The pipe's three foot in, in the ground and uh, it's heated. Oh, electric heater, cool. That's a spoiled deer. I know when you line up genetics right, typically your younger deer are better than your older deer. Are you every, finding that? Every time. Okay, so what that means is by the time this show runs, what you're gonna be able to do, you're gonna be able to come out here and these guys are gonna be coming on two and they're going to be better than what we're fixing to show you. All right. Yep. Where are the two-year-old? Right down here on the right. Oh my goodness. Right out here in the middle of an Illinois cornfield, you wouldn't expect to have a deer farm like this. These are two-year-olds? So what you've done, you've taken genetics from literally all over the country. Mm -hmm. Oklahoma and Ohio and Pennsylvania and all over and brought it together to form your herd. So when do you take the deer and make a decision whether you're gonna breed them or not? Because you've got some outstanding two-year-olds but and you've got some incredible one-year-olds. When do you make that decision and why? Time of breeding, kind of frames, the genetics and what's gonna click best with what doe. What I've been taught in the, in the industry is 75% of the horns come from the doe. And I totally agree with you. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's all in the doe. And I mean, maybe not all, I mean, it takes a little a buck to right, make it. But I'll right. tell you what, the, if you have a doe that throws good, she's gonna, you put some good semen in her, she's gonna to continue to throw good, odds are. That's why I uh, am buying the best does at sales and stuff. And I guess what's making my herd now is the does that I bought is really making my frames come out and going for the typical lines now. Well, there's on your shirt. Now look at this, it's true. Only one can dominate and there is only one rusty car. Thank you. Thanks for having me out. And so if somebody wants to get a hold of you, give them your telephone number. 1-309-275-9567. And that is my cell number, so you get a hold of me anytime you call. If I don't get a hold of you, within a day, call me back. So let me ask you this, would you ever have thought 10 years ago that you'd be doing this today? I never would have thought I was living the wonderful hobbies like I'm doing. And making a living at it. Making a living at it. And coming out and spending time with the deer and it's relaxing and it's a good hobby for my whole family.
You know, I got lots of relatives that come feed the deer. I got lots of kids in town that come feed the deer. It's just a good situation that I've created out here and a lot of beautiful deer. A lot of these people that come out, I'm sure it's the first time they've been introduced to a deer farm, isn't it? Yeah. Not only is a deer farm a good enterprise, okay, but I want to ask you about something. How has it helped you therapeutically to get over past your accident? It's very th therapeutic, it's relaxing, it's calming. You know, you just get to come out and pet beautiful animals every day, bottle feed baby fawns. All friends and family, it's therapeutic for them as well. You know, the kids all just have the best time ever to come bottle feeding deer, and it's just a wonderful experience, deer farming. Farming in our country, unfortunately, is dying. People are not, not wanting to be farmers anymore. Correct. And deer farming is a great way to, to, to keep farming alive. I took 10 acres out of production to put 12 pens up here. Now it's more profitable than farming crops and you get to relax with it. You know, it's nothing more enjoyable than looking at beautiful nature and it's in your backyard. Well, the important thing is, is that the generational, the, how many generations have y'all had this farm now? This is, this is cool. Listen, this. I'm the fifth generation to own this farm. There's not many farms in this country that can say, five generations in the same family. Deer and Wildlife Stories is brought to you in part by winadeerfarm.com, presented by High Roller Whitetails. Game Management Software, the North American Deer Farmers Association, New Dart, Shock Effect Probiotics, and Keith Warren's Texas Hidden Springs Ranch, the best value for Texas trophy deer hunting. Welcome back to Deer and Wildlife Stories, where we're in Illinois, with Rusty Carr from Dominant Genetics. As I mentioned at the top of the show, this is the first time Deer Wildlife Stories has ever featured a deer farm in Illinois. And it's been a lot of fun getting to know Rusty Carr and seeing some of his great whitetails. After seeing Rusty's deer farm, I had the chance to sit down with him one-on-one -on -one with this genetic deer wizard and pick his brain to see exactly how he consistently produces such big deer. The non-typicals are a good thing, it's not exactly what I'm chasing. I'm, I'm wanting to chase the wide, framey, beautiful look that every farmer dreams about. Not that, that non-typical is the wrong thing to do, just it's just not my dream. Yeah, I look back at, the, at your AI sires and I look at the pictures of them and I know the deer that they've thrown and I know that those deer, they throw basically typical frames. Mm -hmm. And so you're lining them up with those that have historically thrown typical frames and look what you're getting. Exactly, I did a lot of research into the breeding of my deer. I you know I'm nothing but super sires on my does. I'm not doing nothing that's not a super sire. You know, I want proven bucks, proven super sires. And a lot of research has evolved in breeding deer. I mean, it's if you throw something together, you won't get big results like, like I've been getting. You've bred your deer up to where now you've got unbelievable yearling bucks. I mean, you two year olds, I look at the pen and I'm amazed. Okay, it, but your one year olds is where I'm really amazed, okay? It's like those one-year-olds, when they hit two, are gonna smoke the two-year-olds now, okay? How can you take your best one-year-old buck, that great, big, framey one-year-old buck, how can you take him and breed him to 50 does? How do you do that without killing him? Draw semen, draw semen on that buck, and then we're gonna AI them does to be less stress on that buck. Then we're gonna back up them does to make positively that they're bred to that buck. So you're not going to put another cover buck in there. I mean, the only buck that they're going to be right. exposed to is going to be that big yearling. Big so yearling. if somebody wants to buy a deer, if you want to buy a deer that guaranteed is going to be bred by that buck, that's the way that you're going to spread those genetics. And that yep. to me is what's important as a deer buyer. Right. Uh, I want to look at it and I want, I want to make sure I'm getting what I'm paying for. You know, what I think is pretty cool is that a deer farming is unique, a unique business compared to everything else was because your customers are also your friends. Yeah. Okay. Your but your your customers are also competitors. Well, your enemies aren't going to buy your deer. Right. <laughs> right. And, and, and so literally, while while you've got other basically every deer farmer in the country is watching this show. Uh huh. Okay. And and a lot of wannabe deer farmers are watching this show, and guys are trying to figure out: Do I want to spend my money with Rusty Carr? Do I want to deal with him? What I recommend for every farmer getting into the industry: You go to the person's farm see how calm their does are, see how wound up their bucks are. My farm is probably one of the calmest farms in the country. And that's something we pride on. We give them treats every day. The deer are well taken care of. The deer are very spoiled at my farm. 
Well, I know that not only are they spoiled, but your mom and dad are a big part of it, aren't they? And my mom and dad and the whole family is, is a big family business, and that's kind of how I wanted to take about it. The whole family, relax, look at the deer, you know. That's, it's more of a family business, and everybody loves it. It's all my friends, and then family friends comes in bottle feeds as well. It's, it's just a really cool hobby to have, and it's even profitable. I mean, see, that's the deal that gets me. You get in at deer farming. Most people have got into deer farming as hobbyists and mm -hmm. evolves into a business. And now it's an enterprise that you have dominant genetics. Right. And, and it's some, okay, somebody wants to buy a live covered doe uh, or a fawn or a, 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 what I call a pasture deer. What do they need to do? To call me, call me at 309-275-9567. Okay, or you, you can log on to dominantgenetics.com and shoot you an email right yep, off that, right? Exactly. Today, we've had the opportunity to see what could be the most impressive one-year-old buck deer and wildlife stories videotaped during our last summer farm tours. The buck's antlers weren't even fully grown yet during this farm visit, but it's clear that this buck is gonna be a game changer for Rusty Carr dominant genetics and the deer farming industry. Every deer farm that produces one of these what I call super bucks like this one comes with a name that'll help them market the deer and their farm in the deer farming industry. This buck didn't have a name when we saw him but he does now and I think it's a pretty fitting name for a buck that's going to help Rusty Carr big time. Help! The buck's name well the buck's name is big time. And judging from the look this buck shows as a yearling, I'm confident that Big Time will be one of the industry's best known bucks for years to come. If you'd like more information on Dominant Genetics, you can log on to their website at dominantgenetics.com or you can call Rusty Carr at 309-275-9567. That's 309-275-9567. Before you make your next Polaris purchase, you owe it to yourself to check out the number one Polaris dealer, Hoffpower Polaris. Log on to KeithWarren.net for 24-7 access to more information, more video, and full episodes. Reproductive services for deer and wildlife stories provided by Dr. Ray Favero's Whitetail Genetics.